and welcome to Introduction to Christianity Comparative Religions number 200. I'm Dr. Janet Brigar and I'm so happy to see you in this online class. This is my first time teaching online. I've taught this class for many semesters and so we're together going to journey through how to do this well. But I'm glad you signed up and I look forward to communicating this online way with you. Now, it's going to be an interesting semester because what is the most important first step that you need to make is to say to yourself, whatever I thought and whatever I experienced about Christianity before I came to this class, I need to put a little pause button on that and open uh, my mind to looking at an academic point of view or what we call the historical method, asking these four or five important questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and then a little bit of somehow. And when we do this, we're going to do it from the most updated historical research. And that's important to understand because in the last 50, 60 years, the amount of material, the archaeology that is now pre available to us is just astronomically larger than it's ever been before. And I hope in some of our lectures you'll be able to see some of these sites, and maybe some of you have already been there and can have that as a reference point. Now sometimes people ask me, do I have to believe in Christianity to be a part of this class? Absolutely not. This is a historical study of a faith. And so if you have no experience of the Bible or Christianity, it's fine because you are starting from the beginning of this class and we will go through each one of those elements. On the other hand, if you're somebody who has a lot of knowledge and background, some things that I'm saying may be challenging to you. They may be a different perspective from the one that you are familiar with. And a lot of times people have a very emotional reaction, like, I do not believe that, and they don't say that in my church, and that's most likely true. This is a historical presentation. And so what I'm doing in this class is giving you a presentation, but what I'm requiring in the class is for you to begin at the point that you're at and process and understand and do the information the work that's required so that you can come back and help me understand what you're thinking. And therefore, the whole perspective of this class is doing what uh, Paul Tillich, the wonderful theologian, said is to ask these questions of meaning, and that is existentially within your own self. What is it that comes to your mind when we're reading or doing the different tasks in this semester? However, um, there are, could be challenging moments, and when those happen, the point is to process them and to communicate with me. And when you have a question uh, during the first part of the semester, just email me and I, I will respond to you. Uh, now, how to communicate with me during the semester is through email. And th some of the directions are on the syllabus and that will be self-explanatory when you read the syllabus. But let me remind you that um, there are times when I won't be responding to the email, which is on Saturdays. I take a break from this class, so if you email me on Saturday, the 24-hour time period will not be present. So if you look on your syllabus, let me be specific about um, some things that I want to point you to. And that is the two pictures that are present in the corner of your syllabus. The top one is from early Christianity, and it's Christ, as you can see, with a group of followers. Now, you might think this is the Last Supper or the Agape meal, but no, it isn't. It's a picture from the Roman culture of Jesus as the philosopher, and in a similar picture, which Socrates was portrayed. And this is what Jesus is called the Logos, the teacher, the Greek Roman philosopher who addresses the questions of the people in the Roman Empire, those who were searching for truth and, and whose belief system no longer was really fitting with their experience of reality. So in that sense, a lot of we're going to be looking at a lot of Greek philosophy, and you might say, why are we doing that? Because the early Christians and the Christian texts that are in the Bible are an integration often of those thoughts. So Jesus as a philosopher is a very important concept because that's pretty much what we're going to be doing in this class. I'm the teacher and you're going to be asking questions. We're having a Socratic dialogue in this class. A second picture are some of the early Christian symbols which are a peace dove and some Greek letters. And why I'm pointing that out to you and why it's on the first page is these are symbols that were relevant to the first century Christians and not necessarily relevant to us. They all spoke the Greek language, they lived in the Mediterranean, and so many of the images and symbols that are of early Christians are, are very and significantly different from ours. But when we get to the medieval times, something that you might be more familiar with, cross. Christ dying on the cross with the blood and all of that really doesn't become a symbol to the 6th century in the Middle Ages. So once again, we have to really understand that each segment of this, this uh, semester is going to be different and present to you different perspectives. 
Now, um, the overview of the class is divided into three units. The first unit is foundational Christianity, these first 300 years when the worldview or the Christian perspective is established. And what I hope you're going to find along with me is that they didn't all agree. Where two or three are gathered, not only was there faith, but there were disagreements. And particularly even Peter and Paul disagreed so much that by the year 65, 30 years or a little less than after Jesus died, they were already having to meet about disagreeing certain fundamental issues. So one of the important parts of this course is to understand pluralism, the many different Christian views and doctrines, and even the Bible itself has pluralistic forms. The second unit is going to be looking at these differences. Who believes what, where, when, why, and how do they arrive at the decisions? It's a little challenging sometimes to understand that some of those dogmatic beliefs that we hold to be true were probably decided by the group that did not have the knives at the council. And that's a little uh, disconcerting sometimes for us to understand that something we've been told very deeply to believe had a lot more to do with who was in power and who had the money. And that's why we're taking this class once again from a critical thinking point of view, which is to say, here's how this decision was arrived at. Here are the winners and the losers. But once again, everyone that loses a theological fight never stops thinking that. And some of the things that were disagreeable to those Christians in the beginning are some of the fights that we're having now, where you might have a fight or disagreement between another Christian. Guess what? They were probably having the same disagreement 2,000 years ago. And why those disagreements are still continuing, what they have to do with our own existential situation is part of what we're going to be looking at this semester. And then finally, the last unit of this class is about what is fundamentally Christian, which is a moral point of view. So we're going to be looking at what is contemporary Christianity look at, like non-denominational Christianity, small church Christianity, Christianity in Asia, Christianity over against and along with Islam and Judaism and Baha'i and Buddhism. And so we now live in a global world that actually is much more similar to the Roman Empire than you might think. And so those issues that we're facing with today, even though our communication is much faster, although not that much faster, and our availability to each other, which is actually not that dissimilar from our early Christians who used to call the Mediterranean Sea their pond, um, maybe a matter of days. Now we can go around the internet in a minute. Maybe it might take them a few days or a couple weeks. Still, the human need to communicate and find truth is, is part of our semester. A task. And so our last unit is going to be looking at those people like Gandhi and Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, and those people who now have become the moral leaders in this multi-faith integration of Christianity and, and the fights that we have now um, that are somewhat painful. And, and we're going to see, unfortunately, that Christians often did kill each other over these points of view and, well, that those are dark moments and they're very challenging. Early Christians used to greet each other with this phrase, um, the peace that passes all understanding. And that is the most foundational piece of Christianity, that Christianity brings you an inner experience of peace and uh, a moral code. And we'll, we'll see how that is the most fundamental part of Christianity and that the dogma is pluralistic. And to understand that point of view is what is really important to me about the first unit, that we understand what the early Christians were doing and how they did it and how that went down its many different pathways throughout the um, past 2,000 years and how in this really, I think, wonderful sense, we're coming to see again that first and early Christian point of view as we uh, now try to figure out what do we do with Christianity in the 21st century. So welcome, and I'm so excited to take this class with you, and I look forward to our interchange online, though it is, and um, I'm now going to turn us to the syllabus so we can understand what exactly our footsteps are going to look like. Let's now look at the syllabus. And um, you have the pictures and the course description, general information on the first page. So let's go to the second page, which I'm not going to go over right now because it's detailed and it describes the learning goals of the department and of this particular class. So please take time on your own to read through the learning objectives of each of these different aspects of the course. If we go to the third page, this in the middle of the page is the um, book that we're going to be using, the textbook. There are two textbooks for this class. The first one is Christianity, an introduction by Alistair McGrath. Please look at the picture of the book on the syllabus. There are several editions, and this edition is not the newer one. 
so please make sure that your book looks like the book on the syllabus. Um, the second text we're going to use is the Bible, and I will go into that in next week when a little bit more about that. But the Bible that you can use any personal Bible to read for this class, but the Bible that I'm going to be using is the interlinear version, and um, that will be online or it will be accessible to you on the downloads. So we're going to talk about that next week. So the only thing you need to do in that regard is to have a Bible that you would like to read, but be cognizant that the one that I'm going to be using in class is the interlinear Bible, and I will show you how to get to that next week. The other part of the class are the, downlo the downloaded and online text YouTube clips, and those are part of each week, and those you will access through the Titanium website. So you'll go to week one, and you will follow the directions given to you on the website and you will click directly into the link. If you have a problem with any of this, please email me and I will help you or I will redo something that I need to do. Um, now, there also in this uh, class are required some other uh, part participating aspects. You need to do two field trips, well, I shall describe in a moment, and then there are group projects, which I will also describe as we go through the syllabus. Let's turn now to page four on the syllabus. So look down and let the top reading says course requirements, weekly requirements. There are weekly requirements which are basically in four different areas. To listen and view the lectures or the online materials, and complete the readings, and you need to do the readings. Please do them and I, I will explain why. And that is because the grading is going to be based upon how much of the information you integrate into the assignments. And then there'll be uh, assignments for units one, two, and three, and those will have slightly different dates, and those will have more than a week to accomplish. At week five, you will be given a group assignment, and we will begin our group activities. And right now, I'm not going to give you those details, and I will give you those um, at a later point. So what you are being asked to do is to complete all the readings, all the lectures, all the ass online assignment materials within the scope of one week. Then what do you need to complete this class technical-wise? Technical On the bottom of page four and into page five are the technical competencies that you need to have for this class. So read those over and uh, if you feel that you have a question about that, there is a technical IT desk in the library. Don't ask me technical questions because I'm going to only point you in that direction. Um, and please try to take care of those within the first week. They may happen from my perspective on the online and we'll correct those as we go through. So if there's an issue, once again, communicate with me and we'll try to correct it. Now let's go to page five, assessment of learning. So what you have for the semester are 100 points. And if you look in the middle of the page, those are delineated there. So 10 points for your field trip essay, 10 points for unit one project essay, which is once again, a multi-week assignment, 10 points for unit two, multi-week assignment, 10 points for unit three, multi-week assignment, and then 30 points for those written weekly assignments. And each of those will be given a designated number of points. So when you receive a grade back, um, it will say 9 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 4 out of 5. It will be very clear to you how many points you're getting and out of what number that assignment actually um, represents. Then the class postings, which will begin um, in week 5, will be worth 10 points. And then lastly, there's the final project, which is due the last week of the semester in the final examination week. And that is a project which I will talk about in a moment. So what are the grading standards for the class? Once again, on page five are the designation and the percentages. Now, because the class is 100 points, it's very easy for you to figure out your grade at different points in the semester. So you add up your points at the end of the semester and whatever they represent, if you got 85 out of 100, 75 out of 100, you look right on this page and that will be what your grade is going to be. Now the grading, the grades will be posted on Titanium beginning week five. Um, however, if there's something that happens in an assignment, you screw up, you don't understand it, um, once again, email me um, if I 
I screw up and I don't did it incorrectly, I will email you. So we're not talking about a non-negotiation here. If something happens that week or you don't understand something, we will redo the assignment or correct the assignment so that you have an opportunity to figure out how you can um, advance with the grades. All right, now let's go to page six. This is a little bit more detail about the assignments. Your essay assignments are based in units one, two, and three, and then the short essay assignments, which are indicated each week what you have to do. Now here's where what you do during the week matters. If you don't read the assignments, and that's obviously a choice, you're not going to be able to integrate that information. If you don't look at all the YouTube clips, the information won't be there. So we are not having quizzes, but we are having essays in which you are graded according to how much of the information you absorb and put into the essay. The weekly written assignments are also graded the same way. That is, that did you really read the text and are you integrating the information from the text? So a good way to read a text is to outline the text or to underline the text and to go over the text again and make sure that you actually understand what is being said there. Uh, so it can be a little disconcerting when there's not an actual quiz, but it won't be a problem for you if you've read the text. The student class postings, beginning week five, when we start those, I'll give you more details about those. Now, what about the field trips? This is an online class, you're saying, so what are you doing making me go to a field trip? Well, here's what I'm doing. The field trip is going to be one of your most significant experiences because what I'm asking you to do is to choose two locations that are different forms of Christian belief system. And if you also want to do some alternative, like for example, if your mom is Buddhist and your dad is Christian and you'd like to compare those two or you'd like to do that, fine, just email me. But the point of this, the assignment is to be able to look at two different branches or experiences of Christianity, even within the same denomination, and try to understand what's really happening. And when we get to section two, unit two, we're going to have nine points of comparison. And that's really important to understand because Christianity is an experiential religion, and people have different experiences based on their reference point, the reference point being age, gender, culture, um, geopolitical situation. And in order to really understand Christianity, we have to be in a place where those things become apparent. Because me sitting here talking to you is going to be helpful, but actually being in, in a situation will be most instructive. Now, how, how do you do that online? Well, I'll give you many options. The first two options are I will set up two uh, scheduled field trips, and one of them will be to the Crystal Cathedral here in um, Orange County, and then another one will be uh, after I survey you and see which one other one you would like to attend. So there will be two field trips that are scheduled. You do not have to go to those field trips. So wherever you're taking this class, uh, may, you can choose a location that is around you or near you. Um, you cannot choose an online location. You actually have to go to the place. And when we get to unit two, about the fifth week of the semester, sixth week of the semester, I will be asking you for your choices and helping you find choices if you have a question about that. The last part of this, the technical part of the syllabus, is emergency procedures. Now, if we were in class, we might have an earthquake or something, and but we're not going to have that. But we may actually have that during the semester, or there may be tech difficulties, or the website may go down. So if any of those things happen, I will communicate with you and we will make adjustments for what that situation is. And once again, communicate with me. Students always feel, I'm not sure why, but fear of the professor, but I'm more afraid that you won't communicate with me. Now, if you have a technical difficulty with your printer or your com uh, computer or anything that is relevant to getting this information, once again, communicate with me and we will make adjustments. There is a computer system in the library and in your local library or your parents' business. I mean, there may be times during the semester where you have to deal with a technical issue on your part, but once again, um, communicate with me about that. So we're now finished with the technical and legal part of the syllabus, and that's important because a syllabus is a contract between both myself and you about how the class is going to go. But there may be adjustments that we need to make during the semester, and that's important for you to understand that 
it is a negotiable adjustable syllabus up to certain points but I can't adjust anything unless once again you're, you're communicating with me. So now let's go to page nine. This is the semester course outline and I'm not going to go through the whole outline right now that you can do that on your own but I want to have you look at week one so that you can understand how the semester is going to progress each week. So week one, August 24th, that we're currently in now is written out in detail. This exact same module is already posted on Titanium and each week there will be the similar kind of posting. So once again, the unit that we're in, unit one, the title of the week, and then the directions. So in this case, uh, look down and view and listen to lectures, view and listen to more than one lecture, complete the readings that will be posted on Titanium as a PDF or directly emailed to you. You will have access to the reading through the website or through email. Go to your online link. Um, this will direct you right to the online source. So you'll just click on your clicker and you will go to the online source. I also will post the um, email address, the online address, in case you can't get that way, you can Google it or whatever other search engine you have onto that um, segment. Then write a short essay and the essay will be posted. And whatever written assignment you have, once again, read the directions. And then I also want to say very clearly to please submit your assignments to me at my email, not through Titanium. So jbrigar at fullerton.edu. And what's going to happen is I'm going to save your uh, semester work. And then when I pull up your name at the end of the semester, I'll review all your work, all your points. Uh, do not submit it through Titanium. All right, then you can look at week two and onward onto the next uh, pages 10. Unit 2, page 11, Unit 3. Don't forget there's Thanksgiving break. There are no online postings during Thanksgiving break. Enjoy your turkey and catch up with anything you need to do. But I might say it's also a good time to work on your final project. And then the last page finally is the end of the semester. Now I will be giving you, as we progress, more information about what are the specific projects, particularly the group project and the project during year two and the field trips. So what I really want you to do the first few weeks of the semester is to concentrate on unit one because unit one, unless you understand all of the aspects of unit one, you can't do unit two and unit three. So don't worry about the requirements of unit two and three but really work very hard at doing all of the readings, exploring the website, PBS, Jesus as Christ, becoming Christ. These are really important points for you to look at. And I won't be able to give you quizzes on all of this information, it's too much, but once again, if you don't do the work, you're not gonna be able to process units two and three. And then finally on page 13, which is the last page of the semester, are the, of the syllabus rather, are the grading rubrics for the paper. And I would like once again for you to read this very carefully because people often say, what's the difference between an A and a B? So once again, let me remind you that all of the units progress. The most important work you're going to do is in unit one. And I can't possibly test or quiz you, so it's gonna be completely up to your initiative. Do you read all the readings? Do you peruse the website? And how much of the website that we'll be using, which is PBS, um, that from Jesus Becomes Christ theme without, it's up to you how much you explore that website. Um, and and I, I urge you to do it because I will be able to help you understand the difference between an A and a B when I say to you and how much of that information did you incorporate into your essays or into your project. Now for those of you that have a lot of background in Christianity, don't assume that what you learned is what's on this website. And some of it may actually be very different. So please, if you have a question or you experience a difference between something you learned, just be, have an open mind. But what you're going to be uh, graded on is the information that is in the text. And often it's different from what you believe in, even if it's not something that you accept or maybe even your pastor says isn't true. Um, I'm not asking for your personal beliefs in, in this um, semester. I'm asking you to read and understand the information that is there. So I know sometimes there's a divide between what you might experience um, in your own family or in your culture or from other people or TV, but you're being graded on what is on the content pages of this uh, website. 
And then lastly, if you turn to page 13, is the grading rubrics for the paper. And I want to draw your attention to what are the differences between A, B, C, and D. Um, the, you can write a, a wonderful paper, five, ten pages long, but its content isn't integrating on an A level. Now, for those of you writing in a second language, I'm not grading your grammar, I'm grading how many of the ideas you are thinking about. And so please remember once again, I cannot stress this enough, do the work. And um, if you have a problem with it, if you need more time, communicate with me. So that covers our introduction to the class. I'm so excited to do this online. I'm a little nervous because I haven't done this before and that's why communication is essential. But I'm really excited because all the people that have taken this class before have found it really instructive. Challenging at moments, challenging to some of the things that they thought were true or things they believed, but challenging in the sense that when you're done thinking, critically thinking with the historical method, it broadens your own understanding and, and helps create dialogue between people who say they're of a same belief system but find themselves at odds with what they think and interpret that religion, and that is really the essence of all humanity, sort of human the humanities is to help people understand and dialogue with each other in a more respectful tone. So good luck. Thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to this class. It's exciting for me. A little nervous since I haven't done online before and maybe you're nervous as well and if you're a super good techie then you can help me make this class better. But enjoy the class. It's going to create an opening in your mind for better understanding and better dialogue and more respect between people. And I, I look forward to our journey together this semester. So thanks and see you in the next lecture.